The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy and still very much in London, we are it's surviving the cold, but there's also some <laughs> sun. And this is the Four Center podcast. <laughs> I'm Ken Napsack. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm sitting in my hotel room on my couch with an energy drink. <laughs> we had a lot of fun in London last night. Yeah. And we are still awake and had some fun at the Ahsoka <laughs> panel. Uh, that is what we're going to be discussing on this episode. It was uh, a great thrill. The Ahsoka yeah. panel was a lot of what uh, I hoped for and expected. The trailer that they played yesterday that we talked a little bit about was was such a the uh, big Ahsoka news that I was really thinking Thrawn is, is the reveal. Yeah. And as people listening probably know, Thrawn indeed was... The reveal. Uh, Ken, I want to start with Thrawn. We'll talk mm-hmm. about some of the other things they talked about or revealed, confirmed on the mm-hmm. panel. Uh, but take me through your Thrawn emotions is uh, <laughs> the blue man was revealed and then yeah. the person playing the blue man. Yeah, I've just seen a face. I can't remember the time or place. <laughs> uh, I do remember. Yeah. Um, so the face of Thrawn was revealed and we've got uh, Lars Mickelson, right? Not Mads. The Mickelson brothers are here. They're probably hanging out in a hotel having a good time. Uh, the reveal was finally made and a long time coming. He did, Lars did such a good job of denying it, but every once in a while those denials just seem too strong. Uh, <laughs> and so it's finally confirmed. So my, my Thrawn thoughts are I'm really excited and I got oddly emotional at the trailer overall, but Lars came out and got emotional too. And, you know, you see another person cry, you start to get a little teary-eyed yourself. So I have a lot of mixed emotions overall uh, of the throne of it all. I've documented that on the podcast. <laughs> uh, but I'm really excited to see it. And I and I got to tell you, just even walking out, uh, 5,000 people squeezing through two doors, uh, a lot of people are really excited for what they experienced in the 90s. It's not going to be the same thing. It's 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 similar. We've already seen Thrawn and Rebels, of course, that, that we'll talk about the Timothy Zahn of it all. But I, I, I loved hearing that. That was one of my favorite things, is people behind me going, oh, man, man, that book in the night. Oh, man, this feels like 1995 again. <laughs> and, and I know a lot of those fans maybe felt that uh, the Disney era was um, casting that aside. And in many ways, they're not wrong. Um, in fact, maybe I was part of that. Problem too. I apologize. Um, <laughs> that's exciting. That's that's my big overall Thrawn thoughts. Yeah, I think uh, for me it was exciting to just be able to move past the speculation. That's happening oh, a yeah. lot this weekend, where we're able to stop talking about the rumors as much. Yep. Who's who's writing this? Who's directing this? Uh, who's suddenly not writing this? And we're getting back to being able to talk about the characters in the story yep. and the legacy. And knowing that there's just all of these thousands of people who are like, well, we, Thrawn was teased being tied to the Ahsoka story in season two of Mandalorian. Right. Okay, we're ready. Yeah. So uh, just for, for clarity for anybody who has not had a chance to look into it, they played a different version of the Ahsoka trailer mm-hmm. that was slightly longer. And I don't think it's a spoiler to say it's a full Thrawn face. Yeah. Uh, the, the trailer that it's available publicly with a couple extra shots. I'm not sure about talking about some of the other yeah. extra shots just in case. Uh, but it was basically the, the trailer that I, I'm sure listeners all know and love by now. <laughs> and when uh, Ahsoka says uh, Thrawn is some heir to the Empire, just a shot of him stepping menacingly, <laughs> but calmly Calm. forward. Calm. Uh, Calm. And it was great. That was that was the way they made the reveal. Then yeah. they they brought uh, Lars Mikkelsen out, and I'm sure people have also seen the photos. But like he was, uh, I, I know this isn't his uh, heritage, but uh, he looked like an Irish mob leader. <laughs> he had this. Calm presence, yeah, this yeah. nice sweater, uh, <laughs> what uh, what a friend of mine calls a dude cap. A dude cap. You know, it's just this nice kind of, mm-hmm. you know, this, mm-hmm. pleasant older gentleman yeah. cap. And he exuded Thrawn, right? He really did. This sort of like this presence, this energy, this strength, and in, in so crucial to Thrawn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's intelligence, but there's power in yeah. this coiled power and... 
going to strike? Is it going to strike in a friendly way? Yeah. Is it going to strike in a harmful way? Like, I think that's what's so good about his performance of Thrawn. That silky whisper Mm. makes you want to lean in. Mm. And everything he's saying is thoughtful and mostly, you know, respectful and correct about your art and your heritage. And then this vicious power destroys you. This and, snake re- reaches out and gets you. Yeah, and, and his it, Lars Mikkelsen's presence just conveys mm-hmm. that quiet uh, presence yeah. and power. So I was just happy to see that air and see that energy. He was not, he was very, uh, you know, soft-spoken. He was mm-hmm. emotional. Uh, mm-hmm. But just the presence in the room made me even more excited for Thrawn. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I... I yeah, like I said, I was moved by it there too, and I, I'm with you. On, on we finally can get to it. We finally can just get to what we're going to experience. Uh, the the cards are, are have been dealt in this cast, and Lars is a perfect casting. Uh, some things we learned, you know, he he actually had never been to L.A. before before shooting this series. Did all his rebels vo uh, over Skype? <laughs> you know, it's I uh, love hearing those kind of stories, and he seems someone who's. Just now, fully understanding how big Star Wars is to all of us, you know. Yeah, he, he expressed some things well of everyone involved in this loves this to bring this to you, you meaning the audience there, and um, and I think that was part of what had moved him too. So that, that was a great moment, and that was at the very end of the panel. Yeah, was, the very end yeah. of the panel. And, and you're right; it is really fun uh, to imagine the the Mickelson brothers, <laughs> uh, both here. Uh, you know, one for Indiana Jones, one for Star Wars, but uh, yeah. both have now done Star Wars. And, like, I wonder, like, are those two going to have dinner with Mary Elizabeth Winstead <laughs> and Ewan McGregor, the other couple who's now like, how's your Star Wars going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, um, this is her convention. Well, I mean, Ewan's here as well, but, yeah, it's, 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 it's great. She's getting her time. Yeah, so yeah. much to discuss. But, yeah, that's the, absolutely the headline. Yeah. The Thrawn of it all. Yeah, and he, he, he looked great, I thought. And then uh, I think the other real Thrawn thing to discuss is that um, – Filoni gave a, a, a good little speech about what Thrawn means to people. He was asked uh, mm. by the moderator, why is Thrawn so compelling? And he, and he said a couple of, you know, pretty straightforward things about the character of, you know, the yeah. master chess player, manipulator and all that. But he, he really described what a lot of people were talking about in the hubbub as we exited about how much those books meant to them about yeah. the 90s and the the books, but also just the experience of them. And Filoni yeah. did a good, really, really good job capturing, like, there was not any Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And there was a question of whether, hey, is it ever going to come back? And seeing a big standee in a bookstore. <laughs> in a B. Dalton books. Yeah, B. Dalton books, a Walton books, mm-hmm. whatever books you had wherever you were, <laughs> if you were alive then, uh, filled with heir to the Empire. What's all yeah. this about? And that 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 is a part of this legacy. And they went out of their way to say that they have spoken to Zahn, Timothy Zahn. Yeah. And... Um, and Favreau said, and we're going to be talking to Tim a lot soon. Yes. And he didn't He didn't say it. Sometimes uh, people say those kind of things knowing that they're uh, throwing Throw live it, bait yeah. into the shark pool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he said it kind of casually. So it might be like, hey, we're, we're having lunch. Uh, but I also did take some relevance to it to like, mm-hmm. now that we know that Filoni is doing this, this film. Yeah. I think... There's excitement that the heir to the Empire world, that story, Thrawn as that moniker Mm. is coming. But I really want to temper my expectations that I'm sure the first season of Ahsoka will be a complete story. But what people are excited about is an adaptation of heir to the Empire might be several years away, might be this movie that Filoni is directing Mm. just Mm. on like a functional level. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be building towards that. The comments of them talking to Timothy Zahn, it's not surprising. Of course, as we know, Zahn, Zahn is in canon now in the, whole, the Thrawn series. We have not taken that deep dive. We didn't finish that Thrawn series. Um, but yeah, there was something about, yeah, cause I don't, I, we don't know, we don't know, we're not, we can't spoil what we don't know. Right. <laughs> but there, I almost don't want to speculate, but there definitely seems that this is full. Foot on the on the, on the gas pedal for this Air of the Empire, not a direct adaptation. I don't think Clone Luke is showing up. I don't know. I don't you know. I don't even know if Mar Jade. Or, I don't, I'm not. I'm expecting that. It just yeah. seems the vibe of what that was five years or so after the fall 
Return the, you know, Return the Jedi, uh, Thrawn there as the heir of the Empire that lines in the trailer. And it just seems like they're going full throttle on that. Wouldn't that be amazing if we could say, hey, hey, everybody, you know, what's concerned, uh, confirmed is a suka. A <laughs> clone, yeah. A suka clone would be amazing. <laughs> uh, the panel really was the big pop at the end mm-hmm. of the uh, trailer with the additional footage, the throne of it all. And then a lot of it was just a, a really straightforward, solid panel yeah. discussing the show, discussing the character, discussing memories. So we're going to uh, just kind of break down some of that. Um, yeah. Filoni had a lot of uh, uh, great quotes and uh, a lot of uh, reveals. Started the panel with a shout out to all of the people who worked with him over the years on yeah. Clone Wars and Rebels, specifically shouting out the animators. Mm-hmm. Uh, his initial co-writer, Henry Gilroy, mm-hmm. who often gets left out of the discussion. Yeah. You know, the very true legend of... Mm-hmm. Uh, Filoni as the apprentice to Lucas's master has sort of overshadowed Henry Gilroy, I think. And yep. it was really nice of Filoni to say, like, hey, yeah, George and I co-created it as Soka, but Henry Gilroy was there. So big yep. shout out to him and a big shout out to all of the the voice actors. Didn't lean into any discussion of mm-hmm. it's it's sad that some of them aren't with us. <laughs> hey, but here's <laughs> Lars Mickelson. Uh, there was it was nothing like that, but it was just a, a firm acknowledgement that mm-hmm. many people had yeah. built to this panel, this show. Yeah. How did you feel about that? I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I don't think Dave has failed to do that at all in the past, but I think it, it's easy for fans to focus on him. He's he's a character. He's a front man, uh, whether he wants to be or not. And I think times at times he does. And other times I don't think he does want to be from him. So that's naturally going to happen. Uh, Henry Gilroy has as much to do with the success of Clone Wars as, as any other person on that team, particularly, you know, looking at the first two years uh, where, you know, those great interviews of them together. It was them positioned together. And I'm mm-hmm. not saying Dave pushed them out or anything. Because, again, Gilroy wrote on Rebels, said um, – uh, I've actually had a chance to meet Henry Gilroy. He loves Star Wars. He's, he, he, there's no bitterness there, nothing. I, I think it, there's different paths. But Dave uh, Dave definitely definitely has the big picture in hand. And so for him to acknowledge that, to acknowledge the voice actors, there's some stuff Rosario Dawson said later. I, I put the note of, of uh, it's good messaging on continuing the story of these characters because now we have Sabine and Hera and Chopper and all these other characters coming to live action. Um, we haven't gotten to the Dave, uh, is Dave voicing Chopper thing? I don't know. He'll deny that to them. <laughs> but it was good. It's good messaging. I don't, that I don't mean to make it sound like a Hallmark card, but they understand the legacy of these characters and, and, and how they got to this point and that they're only standing on the shoulder of those giants. It actually meant, it meant, it meant a lot to have Dave take that moment as, as often he does, but to have him at this, this, this big launch for Ahsoka. Yeah, there there was a great acknowledgement, and I think it's really really great that he does take uh, as many rounds of applause. This is an mm-hmm. accomplishment to have been so involved with the animated side, mm-hmm. and now uh, having this big step into live action. But it's a great example of how it is necessary to keep uh, reminding and complimenting everyone involved. Mm-hmm. There's still people when the Bad Batch season two is wrapping up saying. Yeah, in, in a kind way, I'm not criticizing anybody. No, no. Saying uh, Dave Filoni did it again, um, and and I think that is because his legend is is so large. So I'm not chiding yeah. anybody who said that. It's easy to think that his name pops up as the creator. Yeah, but it's Jennifer Corbett. Jennifer Corbett is the Filoni of yeah. Bad Batch, and his shadow is so strong that it is cast over her. And in fact, on the panel today. He talked about how he's not done with animation. He's like, I did oh, that yeah. Tales of the Jedi. And he said, I partially did want to do that Tales of the Jedi because I was so jealous of everything they were doing on Bad Batch. Yeah. He distanced himself that far because he's not actively working on it. Yeah. No, I, 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 I put down that note, too, of uh, also what a world he can just uh, sketch out some ideas on a, on a notepad and, and it turns into <laughs> these wonderful shorts. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah. This not to turn into a conversation about Bad Batch and Jennifer Corbett, but yeah. Um, Definitely, uh, the, the legend of the cowboy hat is is large. So yeah, it was good to get into that today. Yeah, he had a, said a lot of great things as he always does, but he provided some uh, confirmations. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was mm-hmm. a direct, to my great joy, uh, Professor Huyang yeah. confirmation that yes, yes, that is Huyang, uh, and it's made me so happy. Uh, so when the moderator great. asked him, like, and and, and who is playing Professor Huyang? Uh, Floney said. The doctor. The doctor. 
Doctor Who, the Tenth Doctor, and now uh, upcoming the Fourteenth Doctor. That's right. It's a whole thing. Uh, he, yeah. <laughs> he's played more Doctors than anyone. Yeah. Um, back, uh, Rosario Dawson talked a little bit about uh, doing the recordings with him and then being able to act off of yeah. all of Tennant's uh, recordings and, and performance. Mm-hmm. So that was really, really exciting to get that confirmation. Yeah, I'm. I'm. And we, we had had that at uh, Celebration last year, right? He was popped up in the, the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, there was no confirmation of the character. The it was character. just all of us running wild. As, as often is the case. So to get it all cleared up, it's great. And it just gets me so excited because uh, the, Ahsoka, the Ahsoka story is so goes back so many years now in our time and in Star Wars time. And there's so many characters. And to know that Dave's got that stuff in his back of his head of like, oh, Professor Wang would be there. Yeah. Or she'd go to him. Or let's use him. Gets me even more excited for the episodes we're about to see. Yeah, I, I I love the character. I love the oddness in that great world yeah. building that there's this ancient uh, droid that helps mm-hmm. with this extremely spiritual moment of the lightsabers. That was a yeah. great expansion of what a droid can be in yeah. Star Wars. A uh, great fun treat that it was this genre crossover that it's the Doctor. But then to look at it in this era, in the way that the trailer sets Yang up to be... Uh, that it, it's not, I don't feel like Ahsoka is like I got to go rebuild the Jedi Order, mm-hmm. but knows that she needs tools yeah. to help fight, needs wisdom. So the idea that she'd go to this character is interesting narratively, mm-hmm. and it's just such a tribute to the Clone Wars. Like that, there's yes, there's nothing. I think Space Jack Black and Space Lizzo prove it. There's nothing so weird in animation. Yeah, that it can't pop up in live action. <laughs> not that those characters were in no. animation, but they have. 100 percent the vibe oh, God, of man. random background uh, or, or small weirdo in, yeah. in the Clone Wars or Rebels. Yeah, no. The, in fact, you just make me think of the story of uh, Professor Wag, like thousands of years, but also like Order sixty six, the fall, of the Empire. What was he do- doing during that time? Yeah, where was he? Where was he? Was he yeah, was he subjected to uh, yeah. horrible tortures? <laughs> Did he, yeah, yeah. Did he hide things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, uh, and I love that. Again, I love. I love that. All those pieces are out there, and Dave's playing with them. Yeah, we're going to learn so much more. It's very exciting. Um, other things we learned, um, I can't remember, honestly, if this had been confirmed before, that the character that we met in the Jedi episode of Mandalorian Season 2, that Morgan Elspeth, is playing a major role. A very major role, yeah. Um, I'm intrigued by that because I don't know why we discussed it. Whether or not Ahsoka, you know, dookooed her head off at the end of that episode <laughs> or not. But we didn't see that. We didn't see that. And so uh, the character goes on and it seems like a pretty prominent role. Yeah. They really set mm-hmm. her up as one of the big bads. Like uh, there's yeah. almost an energy like that there that uh, mm-hmm. uh, that it's a little bit of a video game thing that this is me putting my spin on it. They didn't say it this way, but like. Uh, that's the that's the sub boss that Ahsoka's gonna have to get through to get to Thrawn. They described her very loyal to a certain character. Yeah, they described right, her as very <laughs> loyal to Thrawn and uh, made a big deal that they're gonna learn more about her past. Very, very big deal. Yeah, yeah I, I believe uh, from that the Jedi episode of Mandalorian that she was is a noble person, right? Who profited from yeah. the conflict in uh built ships right or yeah part of a shipbuilding family yeah so we'll have to review but yes yeah so learning more about her family sounds great some deep star wars lore yeah. uh and then one of the greatest parts of the panel to me was mm-hmm. uh the part where there was absolutely no information uh <laughs> the the actors playing the red blade wielding characters yes. uh, their names were confirmed there's a uh, balin and a uh, shin yeah uh there were last names I missed them. There were last names, and I tried to, and I, Balin Blank and Shin, Shin something or other. Very <laughs> Star Warsy names. Balin, but Balin and Shin. And Shin something. Yeah. Super bad. Yeah. And, uh, they, uh, Filoni was asked, uh, what can you tell us about them? And he's like, nothing. 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 Uh, so they're, they're highlighting the, the yeah. actors. They're acknowledging their presence in, uh, the trailer, in the narrative. But they're really, uh, I was going to say keeping that under their hat, which sounds literal when we're talking about Filoni. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's nothing. So I, I, well, I want to take a moment at uh, having some f- fun, responsible speculation. Yeah. Now that we've had a little bit of time to process the Red Blades in the Ahsoka trailer in this New Republic era where Thrawn is the big bad, 
what are what are any hopes or dreams or thoughts about where those red blade wielders are coming from? You know, I, I don't. Um I don't know where my mind goes immediately. I, I go to I go to a negative space. Of, I don't want them to be, quote unquote, Sith. I want them to be something different. Acolytes of Beyond, but I don't even mean to connect them to the Aftermath books and those characters. <laughs> but those type of people who have not, um, if the Jedi are uh, rebuilding slowly, Luke at the forefront during this era, Ahsoka here now, the search for Ezra and any remaining Jedi, and 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 Force users still exist. I, 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 of course, it would make sense that there'd be a group that's like, well, you know, we don't want those bad old ways to go away. There's still some <laughs> things about that. And there's a power vacuum maybe that we can um, slip into. So I definitely, I'm definitely intrigued. It was not something I was expecting. And that was in the reveal yesterday. Mm-hmm. But seeing, seeing red blades in action, which could mean anything, could mean anything. Um, but it just added a, a, a big epic tension that I wasn't expecting from the series. And again, this goes back to just the idea of thinking that the, the Soka series is, ah, this is going to pick up after Rebels are going to search for Ezra. Got it. Good. The, 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 we are already getting the feeling that, nah, there's some bigger things at play. And I'm really excited about that. So my, my final answer is I, 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 I don't think they're Sith. I think they're worshipers of some kind. Yeah, I think they, there is something about them that has that uh, that vibe. Uh, there is the one shot where there is a force push. Otherwise, I might just be like, uh, yeah. yeah, they're 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 fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're hardcore Sith fans who uh, who got some blades going. Uh, but it does look like actual force sensitivity uh, from uh, Balin Ray Stevenson. Yeah, uh, that was that's his full name, Balin Ray. Ba- Stevenson. Balin Ray Stevenson. Um, yeah, but I what I love about the trailer, and we haven't really had time to do like a full super deep thematic analysis no, of no. the trailer. But I feel like uh, the trailer is set up in many ways to show Ahsoka's need to fill the void of mm. the Jedi. So all sorts of timeline yeah. questions about how, how aware is she of Luke? Has she met him yet? How does she feel about it? All that. Uh, so I love that that's giving an arc to Ahsoka, but relating it back to the mysterious red blades mm. that, if they're going around terrorizing, that we see them attacking people in New Republic outfits, right? Yes, 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 yes. That is the exact threat that a uh, a different blade should rise to yeah. meet. So if Ahsoka is, I want to be looking for Ezra, but I feel the need to res- the responsibility to help with this yeah. is really intriguing. My wild speculation, because they're not they're not coded as inquisitors who survived in any of their Mm -hmm. look or apparel. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe there are a couple of Jedi who had taken their brush vow. (laughs) Maybe maybe Ray Stevenson. Mm -hmm. Uh, The the Shen looks a little bit uh, uh, Shen looks a little bit too young for that. So I'm wondering if they are force sensitives from the unknown regions. That Thrawn Thrawn was foiled twice in Rebels. Yes. In both times, it was because mm. something he doesn't entirely understand and can't entirely account for, and that is the cosmic power of the Force. Right. Right? It's the Bendu yeah. who really slow him down. It's mm. Ezra's mm. weird and mysterious relationship with the Purgles. Yeah. Uh, a board moves that that Thrawn can't play better chess then because he didn't know those pieces were on the board. Right. So I can see Thrawn saying, I need... A counter to this, mm. Uh, mm. the the force is not unique. It, it's in the chess culture. It's understood differently. So Thrawn knows what it is. So these are right? true, these are like Skywalkers, right? Skywalkers these from the chess books. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not fully saying that, but that yeah. idea of like I think we could I, maybe see instead of like Sith, like these are these are people from a different culture, not not chess, obviously, but people yeah. from a different culture who are wielding the dark side or the bogan or whatever they call it. Yeah, no, they look her. Ray Stevenson and Ivana Sakno is the uh, other actor there playing Shin. I, I, I really that opens up some possibilities for me of just of, of it being unknown regions, and whether it's directly connected to Exegol, Sith cultists, or the, the those who are trying to keep it alive. We know those people exist. I don't know. I don't think this is one of those series that's going to go connect to every little corner Mm-mm. of the Star Wars galaxy. But that just just Thrawn and wherever the hell Ezra and the Purgles went with him <laughs> opens up the possibility of exactly what you're talking about, other characters coming in. So I, I like that idea. And out, it, it makes it a little bit of an outside threat and force. Uh, yeah, I would just like a I would like a fresh idea to them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a fresh perspective of the dark side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I, I, I love Kylo worshiping Vader. 
I don't need them to wor- worship Vader. Yeah. 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 And it, it's, it'll be great to see what they want. Um, yeah. So another reveal then is uh, the full director list that they put up on the screen. Oh, yeah. And much of it was as rumored. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. The one that I'm extremely excited about is uh, Steph Green, who directed yes. the second episode of Book of Boba Fett, which I think is just a phenomenal right. episode of Star Wars television. Uh, you, Ken's pulling up his photo that he took. Yeah. Who are the rest of the directors? I don't know if I was allowed to take any photo. They were a little stricter, this this panel. Yeah, so Dave Filoni, Steph Green, Peter Ramsey, of course, uh, who uh, just did uh, a Mandalorian episode, of course, uh, from uh, Spider-Man animated film. Jennifer Getzinger, uh, Gita Patel, and uh, Rick Famuyiwa coming uh, into this one here, which I maybe we'd heard. I, I think I we don't. heard. Yeah, it, it is getting hard to keep track. Yeah, it's hard to get. <laughs> yeah. Hard to get, hard to keep track. And yeah, I think you're right. I think all, all the, even the, I'm not super familiar with Jennifer, Jennifer Getzinger, but I think that name had popped up at one point too. Yeah. But just to see him and to confirm it, and uh, this is the team leading this uh, this important series. That's exciting. Yeah. And Floney specifically said that it's great to connect with uh, with Peter Ramsey, given uh, Peter Ramsey's uh, history with animation, just right. like uh, Filoni and other people on the team. Uh, so I'm sure more coming to light with those directors. Great to see more and more people coming into Star Wars. And Steph Green is one of those. Yeah. Uh, everybody, I felt like, was really on board with that second episode of, of Book of Boba Fett. And then for a lot of uh, Very fans, it, uh, you know, some some brightly colored speeders yeah. <laughs> chased slow and some people were done with some Book of Boba Fett. People were done. People but the were episode done. before with yeah. the Tuscan warrior, with the, the train oh, heist battle. A lot of joy. With the, the vision quest. Ugh. Very, very excited for that. Uh, one of the other big reveals uh, that uh, uh, we, I think, uh, applauded uh, yes. loudly for some hoots and hollers uh, for Kevin Kiner. Kevin so Kiner great. doing the music for Ahsoka. I'm so excited about this because this has been one of those conversation points for years now of why can't Kevin Kiner do any live action Star Wars? Why, why couldn't that not happen? And there's been so many talented people. I uh, love everything uh, that's been done. Uh, I really do. And and and, and Ludwig, of course, uh, Ludwig Gorson with uh, Mando, uh, and Joseph Shirley now, right? Doing uh, doing the score now. I just this makes perfect sense. I, I I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't stopped to think about that. Well, of course, Filoni would pull on Kevin Kiner. Uh, they, they they seem to sing together well, mm-hmm. and uh, that got me really excited because just some of the Bad Batch stuff this year, some of Kiner's best work. And, and to see it on this on this level, it, it's beautiful, and I'm glad he got that chance, getting that chance. Yeah, he's so good at, at doing Star Wars music that really stretches Star Wars. Yes. I think the, the animation yes. hasn't been under a microscope as much music-wise, uh, and it can have all sorts of different tones and locations. Uh, so I'm really yeah. excited to see that translated to live action. It's also just... It, it's great to see somebody who we compliment almost every week when a show is out, right? To, yes. To get this chance. And uh, he, he's not, they talked a lot about how, he's, how he wrote a theme for Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. Um, he's written themes for... Uh, you got to imagine some things from Rebels are going to come in. And yeah. just how much would it suck to be like, oh, we've got a different composer, but hey, Kevin's already done half the work. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's build, the building blocks from these shows. So. Uh, it just makes sense. Yeah. It just makes sense. Uh, the other thing, th- there was there were a couple things in the trailer, and, and I think they, they were really clear about this is just for the room right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Please don't share. So uh, I, I think we'll leave those alone, right? Yeah, I think it's, as much as I want to discuss them, I, I think it's important to, to respect what they're what they're what they are asking there, and there's some great reveals that I want you all to see for the first time, as intended, um, that um, just add to what's uh, the, the anticipation of what's coming. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Ken and I were taking sparse little notes on our our phones, <laughs> and it was uh, yeah. really fun to see when we we're both like, "Ooh, ooh, ooh we're writing ooh. things down." We both wrote down Kevin Kiner. Uh, over the course of this discussion, there were two George Lucas quotes that were thrown out and i saw both ken and i whip out our phones <laughs> uh this wasn't a section of the panel or anything like let's share george lucas george quotes, quotes yeah. uh, but it's gonna be a section of our podcast um, yeah uh floney shared early on that one of the encouraging things that george lucas said to him is dare to be great yeah, yeah. That on a surface level, that sounds like a poster from 1992 with a teacher trying to tell you never to try marijuana. Yeah, yeah. Dare, dare, <laughs> don't no, just dare to be great. Don't do it. On yeah. a surface level, it can sound really 
simple. Yeah. But why did it hit you? Why did you write it down? I, I think it's it, that's it's about uh, it, it is it's actually a little bit of Yoda. It's a little bit of do do or do not. There is no try. And that debate, we even had that discussion on Force Center of what that really means. Um, it doesn't mean you either succeed or fail. It just means that the the committing to the try is mm-hmm. the point, right? And Dare to Be Great is kind of that same vibe to me. Uh, yeah, it, it can be simple bumper sticker advice. Sure, of course, of course. But that just means take that shot. Do it. Be creative. Don't put any boundaries on. Take a risk. Be you. All those wonderful things. It, it did kind of speak to not just me, but speak to what they're trying to do in Star Wars. Uh, you know, in, in George's world, George doesn't, this wasn't a quote specific to, yeah, take my franchise and I've sold it. Dare to be great with it. Um but I, I, I taking big swings and, mm-hmm. and telling the story that matters to you, which is another thing we'll discuss here in a second. But yeah, I, I, I thought that it makes a lot of sense coming from the man in flannel, mm-hmm. you know, who just was like, yeah, no, I do. Uh, they told me I couldn't, but I did. Yep. Yeah. In, in wanting, uh, yes, in, in the best sort of uh, mentor Padawan way, wanting to pass that on to Floney. It, it resonated with me uh, because I've, I'm sure many people have experienced this. I feel like I experienced a lot of it very directly of you can sort of internalize people going, stay in your lane. Yeah. Uh, oh, Filoni, you're you're the you're an uh, your apprentice. Yeah. You, you, you had this interview with Lucas and he took to you and you got elevated to the. Did you what did you do? Right. To earn this, stay in your lane. You, you, you're good at, at at these things, right? Yeah. Um, it's a discussion I've had with with friends, with artists, with people who struggle in lots of ways of uh, having any sort of external. You can't do this view really internalized. I've had conversations yeah. with people about, hey, look, um, I'm not saying that I'm as talented as David Bowie or you are. That I'm mm-hmm. talking. Maybe, maybe we're not. Yeah. Yeah. But David Bowie had to believe he could be David Bowie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. can't, we can't like accept people who've been really successful as it's been preordained. Uh, yeah, there the clouds broke and the angels sang <laughs> when David Bowie was born. David Bowie dared to be great, and we all benefited. Yeah, and maybe you're not David Bowie, but how the hell are you going to know if you don't give yourself permission to say, "Yeah, I'm great." Yeah. And what I have to say is interesting. What I have to do is interesting. And I'm not going to be held back by the negativity. I'm going to say, I, I want to go out there and do this. I mean, if, yeah. if, if George Lucas decided to stay in his lane, none of us would be here. None of us would be here indeed. No, I, I think uh, uh, with so many creators coming into Star Wars and so many people taking on this task. Um, you could easily say Star Wars, stay in your lane, right? Mm-hmm. And, and we've talked about the guideline, the moral guidelines. I'm not talking about that, but stay in your lane, Star Wars. And, and I think these series have shown, even even to me, the recent episode of Mandalorian, episode, <laughs> episode six of season three is, is, a, is a little bit of like, no, let's try something. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was really affecting, really powerful. Um, then in this other Lucas quote, it was in the context of Rosario Dawson talking about her own yeah. feelings about playing Ahsoka, uh, talking about how she checked in with Filoni to make sure that that he was happy. Um, and then I think she said this quote uh, from George that Filoni had said to her <laughs> yeah, yeah. about make sure you like it. Yes. I, and I think this is a very important artistic discussion and one that gets um, viewed lots of different ways about is it the job of creators to make something they know the fans are going to like or do they need to make something creators need to make something that they like mm. uh, that's coming from them. So mm. it is authentic. It is new. It is honest. And that is what make, will make other people like it. Yeah. And it was kind of shared that, yep, this is this was a thing that Lucas really told Filoni, one of the teaching points of mm-hmm. don't worry ahead of time about how the audience is going to react. Yeah. If you like it, if you have no doubt this is good, this is what I wanted to do, it resonates with me, then mm-hmm. that, that's the way to go as an artist. How did that affect you? Uh, it was same, same kind of vein, but just also when you're talking about Star Wars – uh, and, and talking about um, taking these choices, taking these risks with these choices, uh, it just made it, it was a prequel quote for me. Yeah, right? it, it was George saying, "Yeah, I like it. I got it." And maybe George would tell you things here and there that he, obviously he always has things that he wished he could do better. But you know, maybe 
you know, so there's some truths and some things, but just at the end of the day, he told the story he wanted to tell. And I think every one of these creators and every one of these performers in Star Wars going forward, as much as they do pay respects to the fans and, and Lars Mickelson saying everyone, everyone who made this thing just loves Star Wars and they're trying to give you something that you as fans will love too. you know, that does not mean they're they're catering, that they're too precious, that they're uh, playing safe. I think they're not. I mean, this trailer alone is not playing safe that we saw. No. It's taking big swings. Yeah. It's taking big swings. That challenges even what we know of 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 the timeline of Star Wars. What you think you know. There was a great moment where we're da- going back to the beginning where where uh, Dave oh, was, yeah. Dave was talking about, you know, George says, Well, I want Anakin to have a, a, a Padawan and, and Dave actually said to him, But Anakin doesn't have a Padawan and George said, Yeah, he does now. Because <laughs> that's what I want to hear. And that's the story I want to see how he how he does. And that, that that's fascinating. I love that quote for life but as it pertains to star wars it's particularly uh it, it's especially important yeah it's powerful to yeah. me because it, it doesn't mean screw the fans don't pay any attention to them don't listen to them who cares what they want that's obviously yeah. not the way these creators are the events like star wars celebration they repeat again and again oh hey yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. we're here we're, we're, yeah. we're making this for you we're this is, we're here because it's you we we we, mm-hmm. we really hope that a certain thing is going to land well favreau yeah. had said recently in that that interview of like you know, it's really great to have these little kind of bombs go off in the show and see if people react and yep. see if we did our job well. So, like, there's absolutely an awareness and a, and a concern about the fan reaction. But yeah. at the same time, it, the creators have to like it themselves. I, I think the Mandalorian in the whole Mandoverse and Favreau style is getting even more idiosyncratic yeah, yeah. To, to him. Yeah. And it's not going to work for some people. But in some ways, that's what makes it mm-hmm. more enjoyable to me because you're not going to hear it anywhere else that's his style yeah that's his perspective that's his voice yeah uh, and, and that's exciting to me all right uh we spent a good chunk of our ahsoka discussion talking about things george lucas said to <laughs> filoni a long time ago that's we're right. gonna take a, a quick break and we'll be back with more ahsoka thoughts And we are back to continue our discussion of the Ahsoka panel here at Star Wars Celebration 2023 London. Uh, wrote down some Rosario thoughts. Mm. A good junk of the panel was a discussion with Rosario Dawson about playing uh, uh, Ahsoka. She uh, described a scenario where a lot of times she and Dave would, would be on set mm-hmm. and would just really, really not even just work through the scene or talk through the lines, but just start chatting and sort of nerding out about Ahsoka. And Favreau yeah. even made a joke about like, yeah, I got to check sometimes if they're actually working <laughs> or if they're just yeah. talking about Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot said about the sort of the bond between them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, Rosario said a lot of things just kind of about her, her understanding of Ahsoka, who she was. Um, mm-hmm. She said that Ahsoka is a person who understands her strengths and weaknesses mm-hmm. and kind of said that is a, a reason that Ahsoka would really say, here's what I can handle and here's what I can't and here's what I need help with. Mm-hmm. Uh, she described her as very lonely, lonely, lonely which yeah. I thought was great and powerful because mm-hmm. I, I am still in this sort of camp that we uh, are seeing her in a different state in, in Book of Boba Fett and that she's got some some healing to mm-hmm. do from uh, losing Anakin, missing out on the Galactic Civil War, which yeah. <laughs> is what I think the story will be. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, she also said uh, that uh, Ahsoka is not a Jedi, but she mm. is yeah. imbued with the Jedi way and wants to help. Um, yeah. How did you feel about Rosario Dawson sort of wading into the Jedi, not Jedi, because Ahsoka had the, the, the great... Cool yeah. line in the Rebels conflict with Vader, where, you know, he yeah. says, I'll avenge Anakin. And Vader says, that's, that's not a Jedi's way. And she says, I am no Jedi. And then she's been in an episode of Mandalorian called The Jedi. The yeah. trailer for Ahsoka has multiple nouns for her. Yes. And I believe the final one is Jedi. Jedi. <laughs> yeah. uh, Outcast, rebel, uh, Jedi. Yeah. Jedi. And that could be her resume of things she has been. Sure, um, sure, sure. But, but how do you feel about this ongoing Jedi, not a Jedi? I, I, I think it's it's it just all goes to what we, we've already discussed about. It's the spirit of, of who Ahsoka is. It's her being true to the tenets of, of the Jedi, but not necessarily the order that uh, collapsed. And that, that still goes on. And that's that's her driving force is to be like a Jedi. Uh, and maybe you don't have to have the title clearly to, to be it. It almost, you know, 
what's a Mandalorian? Now what's a Jedi? But we have a little more clear cut look on what the Jedi are. But no, I, I, I'm, I really like, I really like that she, she can not definitely not be in the gray area. I don't believe mm-hmm. in that, but, but that she, uh, almost like that would, there's something about this that's like to just, if she was to call herself a Jedi in this time, it would almost be in the way of what Luke's trying to do. Mm-hmm. It almost be in a, in a way of other people's story that she doesn't need that. She might be a Jedi in, in every aspect, but she doesn't need to go around saying that right now um, because that's uh, that would always put her on a different kind of path, if you know what I mean. Luke's doing what he's doing. And I'm, I'm wondering how they're going to answer that. Yeah. I wonder if we're going to get that at all. All right. Of, I'm, look, I'm going to go do this. You need to rebuild the order. <laughs> well, there is a question. There's a real timeline question as if she is responding to problems. The trailer, you know, uh, uh, something yeah. dark is coming. There aren't many, you know, the yeah. Jedi fell so long ago. There aren't many of us left. Yeah. Um, if she is aware of Luke's presence yet, mm. uh, is uh, that that That's timeline true. question is is really important. So it's also That's a true. very important question of like if <laughs> Ahsoka is going around trying to tell people like a darkness is coming, Thrawn's a problem, and Luke's like. I'm meditating. Don't bother yeah, me. Don't like, <laughs> that's I'm a learning. you problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning. I'm building or buying these droids that build huts. Don't yes. bother me. Yeah. I, I don't think that's a Luke story. No, I, I love the ongoing story of Jedi, not a Jedi. And I think that is going to be a part of this show since it's so clearly all over the, the trailer. I continue yeah. to think that it, it's not that Ahsoka broke with any of the tenants of the Jedi. She broke with the order because the order was beginning to step on its own tenants, <laughs> yeah, as yeah. it were, and that she is a, a pretty pure Jedi in that she doesn't need to sort of dogmatically remind herself to follow the rules. Right. It's what her heart pulls her to do. She's, she's free to do that. She sees a problem and she wants to help. Mm-hmm. She wants to make a difference and she wants to defend and make things right. And that's just naturally who she is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. A couple other great things that Rosario Dawson said. Uh, she described a lot of how um, just getting into the role of Ahsoka has made a huge difference in her life because she just needs to be so zen, mm-hmm. so centered, mm-hmm. uh, spiritually and literally physically with all the training. How yeah. did that affect you? Did you find yourself going like, I wish I could play a Jedi so it would make my life better? <laughs> <So, well, laughs> no, I mean, she's so into this. That's the big thing. I, I, I've seen it in, in other interviews in other moments, even yesterday coming on the panel. Uh, this is not just a role for her, you know, this is a now kind of a way of life. She takes this role very seriously. She takes what it means to the fans very, very seriously. She's very aware of it. Even some of the negative stuff, she explains some of the tech on the costume that mm-hmm. has changed and gotten better. But, um, I love to, I love to hear that. This is someone who's fully invested, especially for a character that had someone p- portraying her that was also fully invested. Ashley Eckstein is. <laughs> Fully vested in, and, and Rosario seems to have, have met her on that level. Is truly living the role, and I think that's who you want in this role. Yeah, I totally agree. I think all of that, uh, the 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 stubbornness they mentioned, uh, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. the compassion, the need to keep moving forward, everything that has been a part of Ahsoka's character from the the beginning, yeah. everything that was sort yeah. of similar to Anakin, <laughs> yep, uh, is still there. But there's this, like, I've been through a lot, and I need to be calm and centered and clearly making the right choices. Uh, I, I appreciate it from the perspective of, you know, doing the podcast. And we have, when we have deep dives on issues, particularly like Jedi, Jedi yeah, stuff, yeah. It's sometimes, like, the rest of my day or the rest of my week is better because I'm, like, uh, focused on we, yeah we, we've we've talked so much about why did kenobi do this what is this yeah, scene yeah. about yeah that i feel like ah oh, yes yeah i'll be zen and centered um in traffic and in this email and in this conversation with my family member yeah, and you yeah. know i could be better is what i always tell myself. i could be better exactly yeah. mm-hmm. uh you mentioned the last thing i wanted to talk about uh, it was a great moment in the the panel mm-hmm. uh she talked about her montrals mm-hmm. uh which i think there's ongoing debate about is the Montreal simply the uh, pokey points at the top of a Trigruta's head <laughs> and the rest are called Leku? Or is the entire yeah. head uh, piece, including points and tails, Montreal's? Or is <laughs> or does a Montreal have Leku? Yeah. Which I just, I love getting into that level of nerdery where, you know, <laughs> if, uh, if a person outside of Star Wars would be like, are you okay? Are those human words? What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I think we should ask the people on the on the floor in the convention floor. There'll be some heated debates out there. Heated debate. I've seen some like they're Leku. Like no, they're Montrals. They're yeah. Montrals with Leku. <laughs> uh, anyway, point being, uh, they were describing how the tech has gotten a lot better, and that basically mm-hmm. uh, in mm-hmm. the Mandalorian episode that the headpiece just didn't move, and and she was it was heavy. It didn't move. It was foam. And she had to Batman 89 Michael Keaton it. Yeah. Like it was really like it, it doesn't it doesn't move. And we needed to work with it. And it wasn't a choice. It was this is how we, we, yeah. we can't figure out how to do it better right now. Throughout the panel, they talked about the that episode of The Mandalorian is central to Din's story and Grogu's yeah. story, but also a way to test everything yeah. about Ahsoka. Does it work? Because we, we want to do this series, but we, we want to see if everything works. And one of the things that. They got away with, but fans commented on where uh, the Montreal slash Leku. Uh, so they explained how they have much better technology. It's it's they're more flowing and organic and they move. Yeah. And then she said again, she went right in. <laughs> Rosario Dawson said, and they're they're longer. Like, yeah, we heard. Yeah. We understand. We, we got it. <laughs> we got it. So that was in, <laughs> in, in, one of these things that pops up in all in fan communities where people were really yeah. bothered by it, yeah. really upset that it, it had been established in canon that DeGruda's uh, Leku or Montreal grow mm-hmm. longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had grown longer uh, yeah. and, and been a part of her. I saw a lot of tweets where people were like I, I went emotionally on this journey. With her in mm-hmm. in Rebels, they are long because she has to become an adult, and this is hurting me. That it's it, yeah. is she being rever- yeah. I supposed to believe she's been sort of right. reverted back to adolescence. This is disturbing. Like people, it wasn't. There was some of the pedantic, and there were some people who tied some very very strong emotions yeah. to it. And Rosario Dawson just went right into it and said quickly and casually, like we are. Yeah, we heard. It's, yeah. it's super clear that length was an issue for everybody, and, and we're working on it. We worked on it. Yeah, I know it's fantastic, and she just uh, yes, yeah, and, and I, the way you're describing it too, if people have an emotional connection to them. I'm never here to take that that feeling away from anyone, but there is just a back back when that happened, and it happens every once in a while in Star Wars, and it's going to happen more. Cad Bane's hat is it too big? Is it too small? Uh, the fact that there's sometimes an attitude that oh they that like they aren't watching Star Wars, you know that that Filoni forgot, <laughs> and that's where I always rub up against it, and and and. Uh, even if even if they're to keep them the same same length, like what are you going to do about it? But they asked that question: What are you going to do about it? And the Lake Lake Hugh, Montreals, whatever you want to say, are three D. They have like three D printed bones essentially mm-hmm. with skin around them, and they're light. And they're they have a movability, uh, so you're going to get more fighting. You're going to get more things. And yeah, you go back to that episode, you can kind of see what Rosario Dawson is talking about. Mm-hmm. The mobility is not there. The, the stoic nature is high, heightened by the fact that she simply could not turn left or right in that in that outfit. Yeah, yeah, and she was even like, it doesn't show a ton in this trailer, but oh, they move, they move, <laughs> they move. Yeah. So uh, that was uh, some of Rosario Dawson's thoughts. Uh, Want to talk about the rest of the rebels? Um, yeah. Chopper rolled out uh, live on stage again. Uh, it, it was like Chopper was security because he, he would roll out <laughs> every time somebody new was added to the panel. And then there was a funny bit that he was uh, frightened by the villains and uh, made a Chopper a little screamy noise and rolled away. Yeah. Um, so that's Chopper. We're excited to, for more about Chopper. Um, Mary Elizabeth Winstead talked a little bit about Hera. Uh, she talked about she was asked the process in of uh, becoming here and she's like well watch rebels <laughs> yeah better to watch rebels uh she talked about really being affected in, in trying to play hera with an awareness of everything that hera carries mm-hmm. and I, mm-hmm. I i felt some of that was acknowledging the trauma of the galactic civil war but but still the trauma of canaan yeah. um and and she called out uh, something that fans discuss a lot about hera of Hera is an accomplished pilot, a general in uh, the the Rebel Alliance and, and now the New Republic. Uh, but she's also everybody's mom. And, yeah. and I so appreciated in my Rebels rewatch that it was truly about completely um, different cultural ways that we look at motherhood, where it wasn't just like, I'm going to make sure you're physically safe. I'm going to tell you to, you know, eat, eat your vegetables. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. uh, S- Sabine and Ezra. 
but that she took on everybody's emotional problems and like tracked them. Like, I yeah. know there's some stuff that Sabine hasn't worked through that she's went through on, yeah. on Mandalore and in the Empire. And she hasn't told me yet, but she will when she's ready. I'm the one who has to remind Kanan. This is what Ezra is going through about losing his his parents. That's why he's acting like this. Like she kept track of everybody's business and carried it for her for them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. while still trying to make make room for herself. How do you feel hearing the the actor, the new actor of Hera, acknowledge that that legacy again shows that they have respect for these characters uh, like we knew they would, but uh, that we're going to get more true continuation of, of of the emotional journeys of those characters. That Hera does is not just here to show up and wave. Mm-hmm. Uh, that 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 these characters, even though there was an early in earlier in the in the um, panel, J- John Favreau said something about, "Hey, the larger goal f- w- was bringing in Dave's characters," and and and, and that could that w- that was said which was such a uh, a uh, laissez-faire kind of like, yeah, yeah, Dave always wanted to do this. But Davis said, no, I don't try to bring my characters in. I, I want to bring them in. So it's, I think it was just John saying an overall sense of, yeah, of course, Dave getting involved. We want to see what we can do do with the, these characters. A little bit of the, that Jedi episode, Mando, was a bit of a test. Uh, the, the, a pilot almost, if you will. Like the, the, the shorter Montreals are almost like a, an actor having a different haircut in the pilots. And then the series gets picked up and they change things. There's that vibe, but to take that into the Mary Elizabeth uh, Winstead's comments about um, uh, what she's bringing and how she's going to deal with Hera, it, it to me shows this great purpose in those characters being there, and that gives me even more confident, comfort and confidence as a fan. Yeah, it, it was ex- really, really exciting. They flash a great photo of of yeah, Hera. Yeah. Well, yeah, good, great, what great one. Uh, flash, flash a great uh, photo of Sabine as well with some different yeah. outfits. Um, uh, mm. I, I don't feel I might have missed it. I don't feel like the actor. Um, since the actor has been uh, uh, mm-hmm. around now f- and announced for a year, yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, a lot of what she said about Sabine in the process, uh, she said before. But yeah. one thing in particular that she once again emphasized was the uh, the training. Yeah, for yeah. the fights. Um, We're gonna get some fighting here. Yeah. So another big thing that came up on the panel was a discussion of the uh, trainer, mm. uh, Ming Q. Uh, they talked about how she is also the uh, Jedi who's trying to protect the younglings in the first episode yeah. of Obi Wan. Yeah, and yeah. that everybody's really happy to see her in that. But they all joked. The hard thing about watching it, though, is there's no way that those clone troopers could ever. They might have <laughs> beat that Jedi, but they could not beat Ming Q. Uh, yeah, it got me really excited because they talked about um, her training in martial arts, mm-hmm. uh, going back to like she. Sounded like she had been training yes. uh, hard since she was nine years old. Not like after school, I take a couple classes, no. but they're talking about her being like sent away from her family. Went to a temple. She saw her family once a year for 10 years and yeah. represented China in the Olympics in martial arts. Yeah. It, and they talked a lot about the huge level of training and uh, Ming Q really holding the actors to. To account. And it, it, yeah. I can't remember who said it. it like, you'd do a take and be like, that felt pretty cool. That felt yeah. pretty cool. And then yeah. you look over to Ming Q and she'd be like, mm, you can do a little <laughs> bit better. Uh, so it's a real emphasis on fighting. They also mentioned how the the, the big fight mm-hmm. between uh, Ahsoka and Morgan Elspeth in that Mandalorian episode. Uh, they learned a lot from that because they tried to shoot it in one day, one day. And it took 17 hours. Yeah. yeah. Brutal. Brutal, but Over it was yet uh, another time where they uh, acknowledged that yeah. they learned a lot from yeah. the first go round with Ahsoka and really emphasized the fighting. So I, I'm kind of thinking that what we're seeing in the trailer is, is maybe only a very, very small taste of the kind of combat and action yeah. that there is in this show. No, I think we're getting a lot of uh, fighting, uh, lightsaber fights in particular. Uh, because a lot of that stuff we see with Ahsoka and those droids that's in that trailer as mm. well. Like, I, I even wonder if that's some sort of training or any, who knows, or or guards as she's trying to find Professor Huang. I don't know. Something like that. Cool. But I, I think you're going to get some, uh, between this and some of the stuff that um, we saw, but it's not public with Acolyte, we've, we've just got a lot of cool, very stylistic uh, lightsaber uh, Star Wars fights coming our, our way. It's a good time for lightsaber yeah, fighting. It really, really will be. Ken, those are most of my notes. Do you have anything uh, in your notes that we ha- haven't chatted about? No, uh, everything, uh, everything we touched there. Just want to maybe well, we can look at the uh, as best we can describe. We, what are some things again? We're going to hold back from any kind of trailer discussion. They released something just for the room, um, but I'll just say this: it, 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 
as someone who enjoys Rebels so much, and I know as know what Rebels means to so many people, um, I think it's just going to blow your mind. Yeah, I think it's just going to blow your mind. Yeah, there's and there's tiny little things. I know you and I react in one similar moment too, of just like, oh God, I'm seeing that. Yeah, it's seeing just, that. It, it's not a huge. I'm not going to say it because it's not yeah. a huge spoiler. It's, it's not just, huge, but it's just yeah. It's one of those flavor things of like that thing I like from the thing I like is in the new thing I'm going to like. Yeah, and it's just so exciting to see. It, it's uh, they're really walking a, a, a great um, mm -hmm. a great line with this. That to me, there's no way you can watch that trailer and not be centered on Ahsoka yeah. and her journey and her concerns. Uh, but it is also uh, Rebels 2.0. Rebels mm -hmm. in live action continuing their story and and both are thrilling. Yeah, no, the the, the my final thought on, on just the trailer and the panel is uh, like, kind of like we said yesterday when the reveal of the, of the teaser um, happened. Uh, it's just way bigger than I even anticipated with this series. And, and I and and sometimes you know Dave's a character and there's so many things about him that make me laugh. Sometimes you know I, he knows what he wants to do and he knows Star Wars well and. Uh, I, I, I can't wait to see. I, 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 at this point, I can't even imagine what they've cooked up. And yeah. that's what I love. Yeah. And it, it's going to get into Jedi. It's going to get into the dark side. It's yeah. uh, the, the, the spiritual nature of it, the philosophy of it. Yeah. Jedi, not a Jedi. What does it mean? What What is Ezra thinking out there in Purgle Town, Purgletory? Yeah. Uh, can't yeah. wait to find out. Here's the, here's a final thing that I, I okay. thought it was fun to share. Um, we were talking yesterday about... Uh, Favreau having a little bit of this sort of your your fun uncle who gives you mm -hmm. more candy than he maybe should. Yeah. Uh, they played the trailer and I think spontaneously a big chunk of the audience started saying one more time, one, one more time. time. And they're kind of like, hey, could you let us introduce Thrawn? Here, here's Lars Mikkelsen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there was a couple of one more time. And, and the, the moderator, to his credit, was just trying to wrap up, trying to yeah. keep, keep the trains running on time kind of thing. And <laughs> Uncle John leans backstage and is like, making some gestures to somebody and he's like I ass I ass it's okay it's okay they can have it one more time and it's like the candy prophecy came true he's pretty, like give, give them more candy give them more like, ah, they can have one more bit of honey it's fine and they did play it one more time uh, but they'll, they'll be up all night I don't care I don't care let them have some fun yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and we had fun that is it uh, for me Ken that is it that is it for us on this uh, Ahsoka panel uh, reaction uh, like I said some of the stuff isn't out there some of it might get out there if you can wait and and and, and see it as it's intended uh you'll be better for it but we understand sometimes uh, you just want to look we get it we get it a lot of fun hey we are uh, still here we got one more episode coming in london it's been a great time meeting a lot of you there we uh for those who are finding us or want to uh, track us down we're on uh, twitter force center pod instagram youtube subscribe over there trying to get up shorts internet has been a bit of a problem here in this town uh, or at least at the center so bear with us on that and uh support us on patreon if you want it patreon dot com slash four center follow me at kidnaps like joseph at joseph scripture we've got to get run into a panel with star wars explained we'll see you all next time here on force center